everybody. I'm Kevin. Thanks for joining me here at Midwest Woodcraft. Chances are if you've been driving in the Midwest this early spring, you've noticed the expansive fields of purple in the distance. Now clover usually gets most of the credit for this, but the culprit oftentimes is actually this purple dead nettle. Purple dead nettle is actually a member of the mint family. It is both medicinal and edible. It's a real common plant in the Midwest, and oftentimes it grows right under our feet in our own backyard, and we don't even notice it. Give me a couple seconds, and I'll get set up, and we'll go over it real quick. All right, so once you get to know what it is, this purple dead nettle is actually pretty easy to identify. It is a native to Europe and Asia, but it's been pretty widespread throughout North America as well. Uh, the reason they call it dead nettle is the fact that on its stem here, now this is a member of the mint family, so it does have the square stem characteristic of the mints, and it has these really fine hairs in here, a lot like stinging nettle and woods nettle and things like that. But the hairs are actually dead. They do not cause a reaction, so they won't sting you. So that's why they call it dead nettle. Uh, like I said before, it is a member of the mint family. You might, may be able to tell by the leaves here. Uh, it does resemble henbit. Uh, flowers are kind of a similar care, uh, color, and the stems are similar as well. The henbit does have the square stem as well. Uh, but you will notice the upper leaves here on this dead nettle actually has a stem connecting the leaf to the main stem of the plant itself. For a hen bit, the leaf will just be connected right to the main stem of the plant. Like hen bit, purple dead nettle is edible. The leaves can be eaten raw in salads or they can be cooked as a pot herb. I find that the higher leaves up on the plant, the younger leaves are actually a little bit tastier than the older, more mature leaves. In my research, I also found it's been used medicinally over the years. You can actually take the leaves and apply them, kind of mash them up and apply them topically to skin conditions and cuts, uh, minor wounds and burns and things like that. It's been used to stop internal bleeding and hemorrhage over the years, uh, to, rem to promote perspiration and stop the chills. And it's also been used in urinary tract and kidney issues to kind of expel the, the bladder and discharge the kidneys with those sort of issues. So uh, there's actually a lot more uses than that that I was reading about. Those are just a few that kind of stand out. So uh, get out there and do a little bit of your own research. Get out there and locate and ID and uh, see if you can find some more uses for this plant. As always, if you like what you see here, Click like, hit subscribe, and leave us a comment down below. We always love hearing from you. This is Kevin. Thanks for watching Midwest Woodcraft. Hope to see you in the woods real soon.